Welcome to another 5G update. I'm Phil Harvey. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Light Reading, and joining me today is one of my colleagues from Omdia. Uh, Dario Talmasio is uh, based in London and covers uh, 5G and all kinds of other things. Dario, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. How are you, Phil? I'm good. Thanks for joining me today. Um, so I'm in North Texas. You're in London. Uh, it's it's uh, we're we're making the most of of uh, the service provider network <laughs> and connecting remotely since we're not not able to uh, see each other face to face. But um, uh, heading into uh, the big five G event, which is uh, September the uh, let's see, it's September twenty second through the twenty fourth. Uh, so that's a Tuesday through a Thursday. Um, we wanted to do a quick preview of some of the bigger topics in the industry that are also going to be talked about at the event, but maybe giving us a, a, a bit of a, a, a reset for where the industry is, just so that we can kind of get our thinking around, um, you know, what's happening in 5G and also, you know, start thinking about questions and topics we want to hear more about and that sort of thing. So uh, I guess a good place to start is sort of what's working and what's not in the 5G market? Um, what, what have some of the early successes been as uh, service providers have been deploying 5G and, and where do you see some room for improvement? Sure, Phil. Well, kind of a big question you're asking. Um, let's <laughs> start where we are with 5G today uh, or where we were like a few, a few months ago. We, we, we closed 2019 with fairly small proportion of uh, of the customer base moved on, on to 5G. Um, just as a reminder, we, we closed 2019 with 15 to 17 million subscribers. Uh, that is mainly the mm -hmm. EMBB handset-based business. We are on track to close this year, 2020, with about 20, 240 million uh, 5G subscribers, we're still talking about the EMBB business. So we're still talking mainly about the smartphone business. Um, something, uh, mm -hmm. a couple of observation about that is that the market of 5G, so where the, the market has gained traction is very concentrated for, for the 2019. Um, obviously, Korea, uh, South Korea was the first uh, market to launch. Uh, as almost a synchronized launch by all operators with very good coverage, fairly heavy uh, handset subsidy, uh, good penetration. They they already are about seven percent of uh, of the customer base have been um, turned onto 5G from from 4G. So it's kind of encouraging for the Korean market. Um, for this year. We are obviously we have seen many 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 auctions being delayed uh, by many uh, countries, uh, which has slowed down a little bit the first half uh, of the year, the the five G adoption in in most markets. If there is one market that is still pushing really really hard, in fact harder than anticipated, it is uh, the Chinese uh, home market where. We're probably going to see at the end of this year, China alone claiming something like 80% of, of the 5G subscriber base um, in, in global terms. So uh, important wow. developments. The market is, is growing. It, it's, uh, we often compare it to the 4G adoption, and it still is a faster adoption rate compared to 4G. Um, but the reality is that it's also very concentrated. Um, we are expecting, obviously, things to change from from next year. Um, the the elephant in the room is the is the absence of a key OEM in the market that uh, um, has been delayed by 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 COVID uh, and uh, was going right. to be late into the market as um, as as planned. One positive, not very positive note about, about 5G is the performance of, of Korean operators. So we see that as the penetration uh, in, uh, in their market of 5G devices uh, goes up, they also manage to revert an existing negative trend in, uh, in revenue per, per user. So the ARPU of, of uh, subscribers in Korea was, uh, was declining and, and they managed to revert it. Um, 
single low single digit it's not uh, it's not um, uh, an explosive growth obviously but encouraging given that it's coming mainly from refreshing of tariffs uh, and services that are on the back of 5g so to sum it up still early days in the consumer business still early days in the emvb business i think for the for the consumer business another interesting uh, sub segment is uh, is the FWA business. FWA is uh, from some operators we talked to right in the heart of the pandemic. They 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 said to us that because of a, a number of reasons, including the fact that engineers for fixed line could not go around, but also people were staying at home in isolation. FWA. Um, managed to, to sell a lot, to, to really ramp up in terms of consumer adoption and some businesses as well. Obviously, we are still talking about a combination of 4G and 5G FWA, but that, that's, uh, that's a, yeah. good, a good and interesting and f- very fast-growing sub-segment sub, sub of the market. Yeah, it is. So the, 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 um, it, it's, it's taken on a different... Uh, prominence like you said with the pandemic because it it allows for uh allows for quicker coverage to you know to end sites without having to uh you know take fiber all the way to the to the site and uh and then you know the users on the other side can do a bit of self-install without having to uh you know occupy too much uh manpower um and and i I do see that as a, a growing opportunity too because it's like you sort of start out with 4g sites and then that leaves it available to upgrade once you, um, you know, a little bit down the road, once you monetize those uh, those users a bit. It seems like all the major carriers um, in the U, well, particularly Verizon and T-Mobile have made a big noise about FWA for sure in the U.S. The availability of, of, of the network uh, at capacity is, is going to be quite a critical aspect to, to the FWA. Yeah, exactly. And... That's a, yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Um, I, I'm also curious about, you know, um, well, I, I should sort of, sort of put this question to you while we're talking about the consumer adoption of 5G. Um, you know, uh, this past week, Apple had another uh, big tech launch. It was about watches and other things. It didn't really have anything to do with 5G, but there's an anticipation that, you know, within the next six months or so, they're going to um, possibly get into the 5G market in a big way with a with an iPhone. Um, what's the what's the importance of Apple in this consumer 5G market? Well, once again, is is crucial to the adoption of uh, of a new technology, and they have been crucial to the adoption of of 4G and. Uh, and uh, once again, <clears throat> they are crucial to the adoption of, of 5G, not necessarily because their market share. Obviously, we know that the, uh, the market share of Apple is, uh, is prominent in, in, uh, in the smartphone or at least the high-end smartphone in, in many markets. But there are right. an, a number of, uh, of considerations, some, some of which are very much current why uh, Apple is so important in this market. If uh, if you analyze what happens when uh, devices are, are released or in conjunction with network releases. So last year, many service providers launched their 5G networks with the devices they could use, including Samsung and including uh, some other brands. But the reality is that the same service provider, after launching their 5G network, they saw Apple 11 being launched. So immediately they switched all their marketing support or their marketing budgets and advertising onto a device, which was Apple 11. Not all of it, but a lot of it, which is not a 4G device. So unsurprising, if you're not supporting your own network deployment, you won't have it, but it's kind of like chicken and egg type of situation where you 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 need Apple to drive the rest of the market along. Um, you need Apple mm-hmm. to drive net more network deployments, um, and it's it's the way normally technology gets gets um, 
gets deployed in in a mass market type of fashion. Now, as you said, we there are so many anticipations about uh, the, the 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 advent of a 5G device by by Apple. Um, and we've seen also that they're transitioning into more of a service market as well with subscription based uh, model. But 5G is one of the elements uh, that they use uh, or one of the many elements that they use in order to upgrade their own customers. Um, and that is important. It's right. important because it drives the entire kind of customer facing ecosystem into it. And also there is there is another consideration. I'm, I'm sure you are aware as much as everybody else in the world how um, those 5G health-related uh, um, false claims have circulated in the market and how um, damaging right. they have been for service providers to the point that now some local mm -hmm. authorities don't uh, are essentially denying service providers from installing a new base station. Now, imagine like right. the, the marketing muscles of Apple in combination of, of, uh, of service providers and imagine what it does when suddenly, finally, a few more people will have this 5G thing in their hand and every day. And they say, well, after all, this is actually okay. It's just like my 4G phone. It's right. just like my Wi-Fi. So we start getting into the heads of, of people that it's one of the many normal things we have around. And, uh, and possibly all these uh, scares and those concerns and those uh, conspiracy theories about the the health impact of 5G antennas will go away with it. Yeah, the conspiracy theory stuff is, uh, uh, I mean, we we can both be amused and frightened by it, I guess, because there's, uh, you know, there is a um, uh, real danger that it upsets the market, like you said, when, when local authorities start um, giving in to uh, non-scientific uh, nonsense and, and uh, restricting you know, networks abilities to, you know, to progress. Um, then there's also the, the, the whole point of, like you said, it, it, if it's just something that people have heard of, but they haven't experienced it, it definitely changes things when they, when they know someone who has 5g and they're using the service and everything's great. Um, or when they themselves or somebody in their household has it and they realize that, you know, they're not, uh, uh, you know, being, I don't know, shot with lasers or whatever the, whatever, whatever the problem was on the they conspiracy. Don't have a track, <laughs> they don't have a second head growing out of their neck. Because right, right. It, yeah. I, I embrace, I, you know, I, I encourage the conspiracy theorists to embrace the, uh, you know, tr try to, uh, uh, when you get, when 5G comes to your neighborhood, enjoy the convenience of being able to walk outside and just cook your food right into your hands. That's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's simple, right? That's nice. That's a, that's a consumer benefit. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Before I start a riot, um, let's move on to where, um, you know, where there's also opportunity for the service providers, uh, coming up. So the, so the, 5G consumer market, especially in Europe and the U.S., is still on, you know, on the starting gate. Maybe not even on the starting gate. Maybe still in the locker room getting dressed. Um, in the enterprise market, um, that's a slower, seems to be a slower building market as well. But it seems like there's a, a much deeper uh, opportunity there. Um, where where do you see some of the, uh, you know, the bigger uh, opportunities for service providers in that space? It is um, it is lower in 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 a, in the sense that you don't see the the millions or the billions of, of connections, which is the traditional way the the telecom industry tends to to monitor progress. But it is much faster right. in in the sense that the amount of innovation, the amount of collaboration, the amount, the, the number of new services being created and and um, or being co-developed on a daily basis is um, is incredible, and uh, and you 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 can find it in absolutely every single economic sector, and in in every single country, even those that have not developed 5G yet, there is some work uh, in the labs or in the field uh, to really demonstrate in, in the first phase, and now take advantage of, of the benefits 
of 5G. And it really is pretty much in every single sector. Now, obviously, we know that when we talk to at least to service providers, there are still, you know, one of the one of the things that they, they lament the most is the fact that there are still, um, for at least 60% of them, they're still unable to create a, a profitable business case for 5G. Um, in, in general, right. but then when you when you move it into 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 the B two B and especially into the vertical industry, that that is this is where you start seeing some of those potentially profitable b- business cases. There are you know hundreds already of of deployments that are specific uh, for enterprises and and for the vertical sector. Unsurprisingly. Um, the manufacturing sector is the one that is witnessing the most of these uh, trials and deployment, but there's um, there's also uh, the transportation and, and logistics. Um, it's it's a good uh, sector that is ramping up uh, quite quite uh, quite rapidly. The mining and the energy industry uh, yeah. also, and obviously we are talking about we are in a pandemic uh, situation. The healthcare, which was always has always been uh, a target for uh, for the 5G business opportunities, is uh, is enjoying a rejuvenated attention uh, from from service providers, but also from governments and also from from enterprises. So hundreds of of different sectors uh, and uh, and hundreds of uh, of uh, different deployment and trials in each one of, of those sectors. I said uh, in a minute ago that the manufacturing is, is the most important one, but more at large, mm-hmm. we, run, we run a survey um, recently, a survey about the future of, future of work. Um, and then we run it in July with 450 respondents. And, uh, and, and in this survey, there are, you know, overall, we see that ICT budgets for uh, for many uh, businesses are decreasing. But there are two uh, areas in which budgets are increasing, or those that actually those that are increasing their budgets are increasing in two specific areas. One is to provide security platform and services, or to to equip themselves with security platform and services. And the other area is 5G. Mm-hmm. So security and 5G go hand to hand, hand in hand, in 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 right. in the mind of 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 those who have ICT budgets within within businesses. It is, and that that is real. Mm-hmm. It's not um, an experimentation or a speculation. Right. Yeah. So those are key areas that they've identified that they're going to be spending more in and 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 growing. Uh, uh, growing their capabilities. Um, great. Well, we'll, we'll um, uh, let's leave it there for now, because if we talk about everything, then there won't be a need for the conference. Um, <laughs> we'll uh, uh, just remind everybody that the big 5G event is happening September 22nd through September 24th. Uh, it is a completely virtual event. It's online. Go to, uh, uh, you can just search big 5G uh, event and it'll come up. Uh, go to lightreading.com. We have ads all over the place and you can uh, find it there. And uh, Dario Talmacio uh, of Omdia, thanks so much for uh, taking the time. I do appreciate it. Thank you, Phil. Looking forward to the event.